Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to granulate samples, specifically impact type samples within Ableton Live using two slightly different workflows. Here are some of the sounds I've altered using this technique. For these types of impacts, I usually choose Foley sounds, particularly metallic sounding ones, but you can use this technique with any sample and it can even work well with vocals. In fact, the technique is very similar to the jungle vocal time stretch technique with both utilizing textural warping. Samples processed with this technique can work well for bass music generally, particularly instrumental grime, but also for film soundtracks or anything that's a bit left field. So here are the type of samples that we'll be stretching. There's a couple of things I look for when I'm making these kind of selections. Often it'll be if the sound has attack, but also if there's an element of texture to it, as the algorithm can throw up some very interesting artifacts. So let's pick one of these samples and drag it down to a new track so that we have space to work. One thing I do is I always make sure the playhead is right at the start of the transient. I'm also going to switch it to the texture algorithm and I'm going to unwarp and warp the sample. The reason that I do this is because this both activates the ability to change the segment BPM, which is here, and it also unloops the sample. And now we can increase the BPM of the sample. And listen. I might just push the playhead forward to this second transient. You can hear that not only does this increase the sound sustain, it also introduces stuttering, odd distortions, and interesting textures. We mess with the grain size as well. We can mess around with the flux too. Although flux just introduces some element of randomness. We can try now with another sample. Again, it's another sort of smash sample. Unwarp and warp. And then we can increase the clips BPM. We can use saturation to add some more character. So I'm, I've just dragged in a parallel saturation rack, which I will make available in the description. It uses the SoftTube saturation knob, which is a free plugin. And as I always do with saturators, pretty much, I filtered out some of the harsh high frequencies. And you can hear that it helps add a bit more character and it helps to make the sound a little bit thicker. We can also try using Simpler. I'll just add a new MIDI track and drag one of the samples in. Make sure to turn the track down so that it's not too loud. First, we can adjust the playhead to make sure that the sample is being played right from the start. We can also change it to one voice mode because having multiple versions of the sample triggering at the same time could get very messy. And we will make a MIDI clip. And we'll loop it. We'll then need to warp the sample in the same way we did with the audio.
What's cool with Simpler is that you can use the pitch envelope to give the sample a bit more attack. You can do this using the transposition modulation with audio, but using Simpler makes this a lot more convenient. Just make sure to turn it on if it's not on already. And we can adjust the amount and the decay. And this helps give the sample a bit more attack. We can mess around with the ADSR envelope as well. And we can drag in the saturation rack from earlier to help give the sounds a bit more character. We can also experiment with adding effects. So I've been using the echo quite a lot recently. You can also change simpler to one shot mode if you want the whole sample to trigger every time you play it. I prefer it on classic where you can alter the ADSR envelope. I've made this industrial sounding grime loop using a few samples altered with this technique. And if I remove these sounds, you can hear how much they add. Yeah, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you again next time.